In this video, we're going to be looking at the geometry of Lagrangian mechanics. In the previous videos, we have seen a way to rearrange the math. So let's reword one second. We have uh, S, which is the displacement vector field. It tells us at each, for each state, where is it moving in phase space. We have uh, theta, which is uh, another vector field of components P0 and minus H. We have seen the Lagrangian is the scalar product between the two, and we have seen that the action is the line integral of theta. So the question is, uh, what does theta represent? Now, even though we are calling the coordinate QPT instead of XYZ, we are still in a three-dimensional space, so we can use all the tools that we have available for vector calculus. So to understand what theta is, we are going to calculate its curl. More precisely, we are going to calculate the curls of minus theta. In terms of the components of QPT, the curl is going to be given by this expression. But if you substitute x for q, uh, y for p, and z for t, you will see that the expression of the curl here is exactly the, the same as for x, y, z. So for doing the computation, we take the p component, which is 0. We take the t component, which is minus h. The derivative of 0 respect to t is 0. And the minus the derivative of minus h respect to p is the derivative of h with respect to p. The t component is minus h, the q component is p. So we have the derivative of minus h in q, which is minus the derivative of h in q. And then we have minus the derivative of p and t. Now remember, this is a partial derivative, and this p and t are independent variable. It would be like doing the derivative of y uh, with respect to z. These are independent coordinates, and so the derivative of p with respect to t is going to be 0. Again, this is because it's the partial derivative and not the total derivative, so we are not moving along that trajectory. We're just moving along the t direction. So the p component of the curve of minus theta is minus the root of h in q. For the last component, we take the component in q, which is going to be p, and the component in p, which is going to be 0. So we have the derivative in p with respect to p, which is 1, minus the derivative of 0 with respect to q, which is 0. So now let's compare the components of the curves of minus theta to the components of s. We have dq dt and partial derivative of h in respect to p. Well, because of uh, Hamilton's equation, this is equal to this. Then we have dp dt and minus the root of h in q. Well, again, for the Hamilton's equation, these two terms are the same, are equal. And then we have the derivative of time in time is equal to 1, and this is always true. So what happens is that s and the curl of minus theta are actually equal because of Hamilton's equation. So saying that s is equal to the curl of minus theta is uh, stating Hamilton's equation. So minus theta is the vector potential for S. It's uh, a vector field whose curl is S. So we can summarize that we have S, we have a vector field called theta, and S is the curl of minus theta, it's minus the curl of theta. So the Lagrangian is uh, S, the, with a scalar product with uh, minus its vector potential. And now what remains to understand, uh, why do we have uh, that the integral of uh, the vector potential is stationary along uh, the trajectories? And what we want to show is that uh, Hamilton's principle is just a consequence of Hamilton's equation. That is, once we set this uh, relationship between S and theta, then we automatically have uh, that uh, the line integral of theta is uh, stationary. So how do we prove that? Well, we just calculate it. Uh, we have the line integral of theta, we want to make a variation, but what does it mean to make a variation? It means to make the line integral on gamma and subtracting the line integral over gamma prime, which is gonna be a small variation on gamma. 
So we're basically making two line integrals from uh, one from A to B and the other one from B to A. So we are making a line integral over a closed loop. But if we're making a line integral over a closed loop, we can use Stokes theorem. So we are gonna have uh, that the variation is just going to be e the integral of the curl of theta along a sigma, the surface that it's between the original trajectory and the, sm and the small variation. But now remember that uh, S is tangent to gamma by construction because it's telling us where the states are going and also S is minus the curl of theta. Therefore, the curl of theta is tangent to sigma. But if the curl of theta is tangent to sigma, then the surface integral has to be zero. So the, we have the line integral on gamma is going to be equal to the line integral that we do on gamma prime. The line integral is stationary. So Hamilton's principle is just a consequence of Hamilton's equation. It's not adding anything new. Once you were saying that S admits uh, a vector potential and that our vector potential is theta, we've already said that the line integral of the vector potential is going to be stationary along the trajectory.